Hi, it's Sherry. I'm so glad you're here today because for the first time ever, I am teaming up with other talented DIYers on YouTube to bring you even more Thrift Flip inspiration. So when you're done here, click on the description box for the playlist and please check out these other fabulous ladies. I promise you won't be disappointed. We were all challenged to incorporate fabric and the color blue into at least one of our projects. I have eight projects in store for you today, repurposing some of the thrift store finds that I shared with you in yesterday's video. I can't wait to show you how they turned out. So let's get started. One of the challenges in the collaboration was to incorporate the color blue, and I knew I wanted to use this large blue atlas that I found for just $3. I decided to combine it with this flimsy end table that I also purchased for $3. I unscrewed the tabletop, which was actually a picture frame. Originally, I was going to attach the book to the table frame, but on closer inspection, I decided that the table was just too small for the large atlas. So I decided to use just the legs and build a new apron box to attach the legs to. I measured the length and width of the book and then subtracted two inches from each of those measurements to determine the length of the wood I needed to cut. I then cut four pieces of scrap wood. I used wood glue to assemble the apron box and then I used super glue to adhere the apron box to the bottom side of the book. I weighted it down with some other books I had on hand, and I let the glue dry overnight. The next day, I attached the legs using wood screws. I used a countersink drill bit so that the screws would sit just below the level of the wood. Then I could cover over them with some wood fill, which I sanded smooth before I started painting. I applied two coats of coastal blue chalk paint. When the paint was dry, I lightly distressed the edges of the legs and the apron with 220 grit sandpaper, and then I applied a coat of antiquing wax, wiping off the excess with a rag. To add even more interest to the table, I found some other large books I had around the house and sat them on top of the atlas, and then I took an old belt and strapped it around all of the books. Even though the original table was quite flimsy, it is remarkably sturdy now. I already have plenty of vintage suitcases, so I knew I wanted to do something different with the one I picked up in Door County, and I decided to turn it into a clock of sorts. I found a wall clock in my stash that had wood blocks attached to the back. I held the clock against the suitcase in the spot where I wanted it to go, and I marked in pencil where the wood blocks were located, so that I could cut a hole because I wanted the clock to sit flush with the wall of the suitcase. I drilled a couple large holes so that I would have starting points for my jigsaw, which I used to cut out a small square for the back of the clock to fit in. I removed the front of the clock from the back because I wanted to paint the wood frame black to match the suitcase. I painted the frame with a couple coats of black chalk paint. When the paint was dry, I distressed it a bit with 220 grit sandpaper. I chose not to wax it because I wanted the wood to be as matte as the suitcase was. I created a quote in vinyl on my Cricut machine, which I applied to the side of the suitcase. The vinyl was really not sticking as well as I would have liked, so I went over it with my hair blow dryer for a few minutes, which seemed to help the letters to stick better. 
because I can change out the batteries from the inside of the suitcase, I just hot glued the wood frame on. I found an old luggage tag inside the suitcase, and I decided to tie it on the handle for additional decoration. When I started making this, I had every intention of selling it in my retail booth. But when I finished, I liked it so much that I decided to keep it, at least for now. I love the irony of the quote, and I love how it reminds me not to waste the time that I have. For my next project, I'm using thrifted fabric from a dish towel and a tablecloth. I cut leaf shapes from cardstock and from fabric, making the fabric leaves slightly larger than the cardstock. Using spray adhesive, I sandwiched the cardstock in between the two pieces of fabric. Unless your fabric is reversible, make sure that one leaf is the mirror image of the other so that they will match up perfectly with the nice side of the fabric on the outside. Hand sew the two pieces of fabric together using a simple basting stitch around the edges and down the center of the leaf. I cut a strip of the hem off of the dish towel and hot glued it to the leaf to serve as a stem. I added a few stitches just to make sure that it stayed attached. For the maple leaf, I decided to make a stem using florist wire. I just folded a piece over and then twisted it around itself. I stuck one end of the wire into the leaf and hot glued it in place. I also added a couple stitches around the wire stem. If you don't have a Cricut machine to cut out your fabric, you might want to keep your leaf shapes simple. To add a little pizzazz, cut around the edges using pinking shears. Playing off of the idea of pressing leaves in a book, I thought these would make cute bookmarks and a nice gift idea to give someone along with the gift of a book. For this bookmark, I wrapped the wire from each leaf around a plastic stem and then wrapped brown florist tape around the stem. I wanted to keep the rustic appeal of the grease gun that I found at the Habitat Restore, so I decided not to mess around with it too much. I printed out a vintage label which I decoupaged to the side of the can. And for the first time, my ink smudged because I didn't wait even five minutes for my ink to dry. So I used a baby wipe and dabbed at the smudged part, and I thought it cleaned it up fairly well. I decided to stick some paper flowers into the spout of the can. I made these flowers in my tiered tray video, which I'll link below in the description box if you're interested. I tied a simple gingham bow at the base of the flowers, and I was done. I realized that using a grease gun for a vase is not exactly chic decor, but there's something about it that I think is so cute. I put it on a shelf next to a vintage tin, and I love how the buttons pick up on the colors from the tin. Remember the gobel bird I found at the Habitat Restore? I found one for sale on Etsy for $30, the exact price I paid for my entire cart full of merchandise. Even though it's a canary, for some reason it reminded me of the famous goldfinch painting. So I printed out the image and stuck it in a Dollar Tree frame that I painted gray. I glued it to the cardboard because the frame didn't have any glass. I removed the metal clips from the back because I wanted the frame to lie flat against a wooden shelf that I was hot gluing it to. A year ago, I would have painted this shelf white, but I have to say I am loving brown wood again. I hot glued the bird to the shelf, and because hot glue does not form a strong bond with wood, I could easily remove it in the future if I wanted to. To mimic the chain in the painting, 
I took one end of a long strand of twine and tied it around one of the bird's feet, and then I took the other end and tied it through the hole at the top of the shelf. The shelf was intended to be hung on a wall, but I stuck it in my bookcase instead. What do you think of this project? I know it's kind of weird, but I like it. For the next project, I'm going to be using that large, heavy plaster medallion that I picked up at the Habitat Restore. I thought perhaps that a round clock would fit inside the middle of the medallion. And when I started taking this one apart and removed the ornamental ring, I was shocked to find that it fit perfectly. I just needed to clip off some plastic tabs on the back so it would lie flat against the plaster, and the battery pack fit perfectly through the hole. I wanted to change out the clock face, so I very carefully removed the clock hands. The key to doing this is remembering the order that each of the parts goes in so that you can reassemble it correctly. I removed the old clock face, measured it, and then printed out a new one, which I attached just using glue stick. I'll link the image for the clock face in my description box. The clock face will be covered with glass, so I didn't bother going over the image with a coat of Mod Podge. I reassembled the clock hands, making sure I returned everything in the proper order, and then I reassembled the glass cover. I hot glued the clock into the medallion. There were two holes in the medallion, presumably screw holes. I filled one of them with spackling and then smoothed it out with my finger. I had made sure that the second hole lined up with the 12 on the clock face, and I ran some heavy ribbon through that hole so that the medallion could be hung from the wall. I haven't decided if I'm keeping this or if I'm selling this. I had originally thought that I would put it on my mantle, but it is so heavy that I just don't want to risk it falling off and breaking. Although I loved the wooden fruit that I thrifted, I didn't just want to throw it in a bowl like they did in the 1950s, so I decided to turn it into bookends. I cut four same-sized rectangles from a piece of oak wood that was in my garage. I used wood glue to glue two pieces together, and then I let the wood glue dry overnight. The next day, I screwed the two pieces together from the bottom, once again countersinking the holes. I applied antiquing wax to the freshly cut edges so they would blend in with the already stained oak wood. I decided to sand down the bottom of the apple and the orange so there would be at least one piece of fruit on each bookend that was very firmly attached to the wood. I played around with the arrangement of the fruit on each bookend until I fell upon two well-balanced arrangements. Then I used super glue to attach the fruit both to the book end and to the other pieces of fruit. I had thought about adding nails or screws to permanently adhere the fruit to the book end, but once the super glue dried, I was surprised at just how stable and sturdy they were. Do you remember this tea kettle from yesterday's haul? It's just cheap aluminum and doesn't have a lid, so I decided to turn it into a lamp. Separate the top of the socket cover from the bottom half to reveal the socket inside, and then unscrew the two screws and loosen the wires wrapped around them. Unscrew the bottom half of the socket cover from the lamp pipe and slide it off the wire. Drill a hole in the base of the tea kettle, just large enough for the base of the socket cover to fit through, but no larger. I superglued a rubber washer around the hole in the tea kettle 
and a metal washer to the top of the lamp pipe so that the kettle had something a little larger to rest on. Pull the wires through the hole in the bottom of the kettle and through the base of the socket cover. Firmly screw the socket cover into the lamp pipe. Then reattach the wires to the screws. Tighten them. Then snap the top of the socket cover firmly into the base of the socket cover. Tighten the nut holding the base of the lamp pipe until everything is firm and steady. The lamp I chose to use for this project had been a children's lamp, so I removed the remaining decoration, filled the holes with plastic wood. When the wood fill was dry, I sanded over the holes and then applied a couple coats of chalk paint. I had spray painted the tea kettle green, but I still didn't like the plastic handle so I wrapped some twine around it just using a little hot glue at the beginning and then again at the end to hold the twine in place. I didn't like my original paint colors so I repainted the tea kettle with some red acrylic paint I had on hand and I distressed the wood base with a little 220 grit sandpaper. I hot glued a block of wood to a miniature birdhouse that I had to make it a little taller, and then I hot glued the entire thing to the base of the lamp. I also hot glued a cup and saucer to the base of the lamp. You could use super glue or E6000 if you want a more permanent hold. I also super glued a little chicken that I had to the base of the lamp. Then I stuck a strand of pip berries into the spout of the tea kettle and wound it down, ending up in the teacup. I also added a little greenery and a bow. I'll link my bow tutorial in the description box if you're interested in knowing how I tie bows. I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out, although I do wish that the lamp pipe was a little shorter or my birdhouse a little taller. I didn't check to see if the lamp actually worked before I started this project, so I was relieved to discover that it did. I hope I was able to share some new ideas for ways that you can repurpose your thrift store finds. And remember, if you want more ideas, click on the description box and follow the playlist. Thank you so much for watching today. See you next Tuesday. Bye-bye for now.